Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and I'm here today to give you my standard review of the new Tamron 70 to 300 millimeter f4.5 to 6.3 di3 rxd lens. So, what does all of that mean? This, of course, is a telephoto zoom lens. It goes from 70 to 300 millimeters, which of course is a very useful focal range as you can see here. It is variable aperture going from f4.5 to f6.3 and so basically a, a stop variability between that. So how that plays out is you have f4.5 as a maximum aperture till somewhere around a hundred and four 14 millimeters or so and it becomes f5 and that uh, lasts till somewhere around I believe 160 millimeters where it becomes f5.6 and then um, you'll find somewhere around 240 millimeters it becomes f6.3. So di3 means that it is a mirrorless lens in this case specifically designed for the Sony FE platform and RxD refers to the focus system that is employed here which is a rapid extra silent stepping drive. And so they just kind of pick and choose what letters they want out of that to give you RxD. But once again, we've seen another uh, lens from Tamron that follows a familiar uh, ki kind of blueprint for, for Sony mirrorless. Uh, specifically, we've got a lens here that has basically very, very little in terms of features. There's uh, no switches on the side of the barrel. There's not even a zoom lock, which I do miss a bit here because just when I hike with the lens, it's a really wide uh, zoom ring and just there's going to be friction. So I find that it extends after a while, you know, carrying it on a strap or in a harness. And so I do miss that. Uh, there is no image stabilization, no optical steady shot, no VC or vibration compensation as Tamron calls it. So you're going to have to rely on the stability from your camera. And so that means, of course, your mileage is going to vary as to how much stability you get depending on your camera model. And so the newer, what I would call fourth generation Sony bodies are a bit better. You know, A7R Mark III, A9 Mark II, A7C, A7S III. But if you're using um, what I would call third generation, models like myself I own an A9 along with an A7R Mark III the um, you know the the IBIS is not quite as good as the most recent and so obviously your mileage is going to vary depending on what camera body you're using whereas if there's an end lens stabilization system it's you know basically a constant across different camera systems and of course if you own a camera that has no image stabilization no in-body image stabilization I should say then I don't really think that this is probably going to be a great lens for you unless you actually shoot a lot off of a tripod because hand holding uh, you know something out as long as 300 millimeters it's um, you know particularly in the viewfinder there's a lot of unsteadiness there and and so you know it's it's not a great experience however if you've got a camera with in-body image stabilization you know, I think that this lens is certainly in play for you. But what you do get in these Tamron zooms is that you get a great price point. In this case, this lens retails for $550 compared to around $1,200 US for the equivalent Sony lens. And even though the Sony lens does have a stabilizer and a few more features, you know, $550 versus $1,200 is a big price difference, particularly when you consider that the optical performance and the autofocus performance is really not going to be any different. What we also see here is that we do have a great weather sealing suite, you know, at the lens mount and at the various seal points inside, as you can see from this diagram. And so you do get some of kind of the important necessities, I would say. It does come with the lens hood, which is, as you can see, fairly deep. And what we have got here is a nice and sturdy, if not spectacular, build quality. But what we have also got is a lightweight lens. This comes in at 545 grams, and that compares to 854 grams for the Sony lens. In reality, the lens really isn't smaller in absolute sense. It is a, actually a little bit longer than the Sony lens, but it is narrower around. And part of that is because a common design philosophy for Tamron has been that they always design around a 67 millimeter front filter thread for all of its Sony uh, FE mount lenses. And so that's pretty fantastic. I believe there are eight lenses to date and all of them you can use the same set of filters on all of them, which of course can be, can definitely save you more money as an end user if you like to use filters as a part of your photography. And so I think that's 
probably one of the design constraints that maybe allowed, you know, kind of forced them to make the lens a little bit longer. I saw kind of a similar thing uh, when it comes to the Zeiss Loxia series and the Loxia lenses, you know, for example, the 85 millimeter is really long and slender and that's kind of out of necessity because there, I believe it's a 52 millimeter filter thread that they are designing around for a common, uh, a common diameter of lenses. And so, you know, some of that is a factor here. But what we were getting is a lens that is, you know, lightweight, it's, you know, reasonably compact, particularly if you're, you know, looking for a telephoto lens, it's easy to bring along without a whole lot of um, extra work involved, you know, that does, does end up including in a lot of the longer telephoto lenses that are big and bulky and require, you know, unconventional ways of packing them compared to the way that you handle your more standard lenses. And so I think that there is a winning formula that is there, even if we're a little bit short on features. Now, beyond that, as no we do have an RXD focus motor and it is fantastic. It is fast. It is utterly quiet. Um, it's been very reliable in my test. Focus changes are basically, uh, they're basically just instantaneous. And the only time that I saw slowdown was when I was shooting in very low lighting conditions, which probably shouldn't be a surprise. Any f6.3 lens means that, that the camera sensor and thus autofocus system has a lot less light to work with on that telephoto end. And so in, in dim conditions, f6.3 just means that the focus system has to work that much harder in trying to select the proper focus point. And so while it did focus accurately in lower light conditions, focus really slowed down. Of course, the same has been true of just about every lens that I've ever tested with a small maximum aperture on the telephoto end. It's just, you know, kind of par for the course. So if you're working in low lighting conditions and that's kind of your main priority, you might want to consider a lens like Tamron 70 to 180 millimeter f2.8 instead, because that bigger maximum aperture of f2.8 is going to let a lot of light, a lot of additional light in, and that's going to allow you to focus, you know, with more speed and a wider variety of lighting conditions. Not really the strength of a lens like this but the strength was is that in normal you know lighting conditions I had very fast very accurate autofocus and as you can see from these focus pulls focus is utterly silent and smooth for video AF So obviously that's a great result there. I also had very, very good results when it came to IEF for tracking either animals or people. This isn't really what I would consider, you know, what I would buy as a priority for a portrait lens. But as you can see from these portrait shots, it actually does a really nice job, um, you know, kind of as a sideline for this lens. So if you're on a budget and you want kind of a telephoto to do a lot of things, there's no reason why you can't use it as a portrait option as well. Now, let's talk about the image quality because there's a lot of great things that I saw here. With only There's only one exception that I want to point to, and that is that while the lens is very sharp at 70 millimeters in the center of the frame and at the mid frame, there is a really sharp dip into the corners, and the corners never really get super sharp at 70 millimeters. If you zoom in even to, you know, around 90 millimeters, for example, um, you're going to get much, much sharper corners. And in fact, throughout the rest of the zoom range, the corners are very sharp, as is the mid frame and the center of the frame. And so very consistent outside of that one exception, very, very consistent sharpness, an impressive amount of sharpness, in fact, for a lens like this and a lens with this kind of price point. I also found that through uh, 300 millimeters, we had good performance. There's a there's a slight dip in in contrast um, compared to you know say shorter uh, focal lengths, but at the same time, I found that the overall image quality was very good. And as you can see from some of these wide open shots, there's lots of contrast. There's lots of sharpness there, and and so uh, Tamron has done a good job of kind of maximizing the uh, image quality across the zoom range. I also found that the bokeh quality was actually quite nice for a lens like this. I did see, um, you know, maybe one instance where, you know, the, the bokeh got a little bit busier, you know, because of that ratio, my subject was further away, the background was fairly close, so more ended up in that transition zone, so it was a little bit busier, but at the same time, most of these shots you can see, even here where I go through a sequence of shooting at around 100 millimeters, and then at around 170 millimeters, 
and then finally at 300 millimeters, you can see that obviously as you zoom into the longer focal lengths, it really starts to comp compress the seam, but in all cases, the bokeh quality actually looks quite good. And so as a byproduct of this, I saw a lot of images where I was just really, really impressed by great contrast and then a very nice bokeh quality, and so it produced really nice looking images. I did find that there was a kind of a unique longitudinal chromatic aberration and that typically I only see green or um, blue fringing after the plane of focus. In this case, there's a little bit of that before the plane of focus, but the unique thing about that is that you very rarely have situations where you have a lot of out of focus, you know, highlights before the plane of focus, unlike, you know, it's not un at all unusual to have out of focus kind of bokeh highlights in the background. So the byproduct was, is I had to look long and hard outside of my chart test to find a shot where I found any of that at all. So bottom line, not going to be a real world issue for most people in just about all situations. I also found flare resistance to be surprisingly good, and as you can see here as I pan across the sun at 70 millimeters, um, either if I'm wide open or stop down, I actually got very, very little effect from the sun. And so Tamron does have its higher end B-bar coatings on this lens, and you can certainly see the difference that is made. Now, the one area where the lens, this lens is not as good as the Sony is when it comes to maximum magnification. So at 70 millimeters, you can get as close as 0.8 meters or 80 centimeters, and that gives you a magnification that looks something like this. On, on the telephoto end at 300 millimeters, you can't get as close. Your closest uh, distance is 1.5 meters. However, your magnification, as you can see, is higher, and you get basically right under a 0 0.20 times magnification. You also get very, very good image quality there, and as you can see from my kind of my chart test, the resolution and contrast is very good at minimum focus. However, the Sony lens gives you, allows you to focus down much closer. At 300 millimeters, you can focus down to 90 centimeters, and there you get a 0.31 times magnification. So obviously that's a significant improvement. So this is not as good a substitute for some people like to use a telephoto as a, you know, as also a macro lens with a great working distance. You don't have that kind of same degree of flexibility here as though as you can see that, you know, nearly 0 0.20 times magnification is still very very useful. And so at the end of the day, this is actually a lot of lens uh, for the money. And I think that that's been kind of Tamron's winning formula that, you know, you're not getting a lot in terms of features, but they do hit the, the kind of the basics and the priorities. And what many people want are most concerned about is they want great autofocus. They want a, you know, a great image quality and they don't want to pay a big price for it. And often many people are willing to compromise on a few of those other features, bells and whistles uh, to achieve that. And Tamron has really kind of tapped into that market. And so the 70 to 300 millimeter is a great addition to the Sony lineup. And I have to say, I perceive that Sony's greatest advantage in the mirrorless market right now is the fact that there are so many great affordable third-party lenses available for the platform. I think Sony has done itself a favor by being a little bit more open source, open platform, and not discouraging third-party development. And I believe that that does give it a competitive edge in today's market, even though there's strong pushes from you know Canon and Nikon in terms of their camera bodies right now. But I think that Sony has that baked-in advantage of so many lenses like this that for a relatively affordable price of 550 bucks, you're getting a lot of lens that is able to deliver really high-end results. And so kudos to Tamron for giving us another very useful addition to the Sony FE catalog. I'm Dustin Abbott, and if you look in the description down below, you can find linkage to my full text review. Also, if you want even more information, a greater breakdown of image quality, you can check out my definitive video review here. And of course, beyond there, in the description, there is a linkage uh, to check out the image gallery and look at more photos. There are buying links if you'd like to purchase one for yourself. And of course, link is to follow me on social media to become a patron and help support this channel, to sign up for my newsletter. And if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button right here on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.